Photography Channel, 24 hours a day of the world's most fascinating lives. You're watching Biography of the Millennium on A&E. His father wanted him to be a lawyer and was appalled when he became a priest. But this simple German friar would transform the way we look at faith, and by extension, society itself. Martin Luther. The leader of the Protestant Reformation. I mean, he changed the world. I just assumed that he would, if not be number one, certainly one of the, certainly in the top five. Martin Luther's story begins with a crisis of faith. He was sickened by the corruption and greed of his fellow priests, and he was overwhelmed by guilt for his own sinfulness. He prayed and fasted for days on end. Finally, he had a revelation. Only by faith can man reach salvation, he decided. Not through donations to the church, not through a priest at all, just through devotion to God and his mercy. The church was saying, you need the priest, you need ceremonies, you need to use the church in order to attain salvation. Luther said, no, we cannot accept religious belief from others. Unless you have faith, unless you feel the faith within you, you cannot be saved. With Luther, it's a gigantic shift of authority from other people to the individual. You're not given the keys to salvation. You find them for yourself. Luther even began to translate the Bible from Latin into German so that all could read it. Changing religious practice from an obscure ancient dead language, Latin, to the vernacular, to your own living language, English, German, French, Dutch. It's a kind of repossession. I mean, it really lets you own your belief. The conflict between Martin Luther and the church came to a head in 1517, when Luther decided to take a stand. He attacked the Catholic hierarchy in a diatribe called the 95 Theses. Legend has him hammering the document to the front door of the local church. Luther was dragged before an assembly in the German city of Worms. When he refused to recant, he was declared a heretic and excommunicated. Soon after, Luther gathered his supporters together and established the first Protestant congregation, breaking off in protest against the Catholic Church. The central idea that there is no longer a homogeneous Western Christianity, that is an immensely important idea, a liberating idea. It's an idea that leads people to believe they can fashion their religion in their own way and the proliferation of sects and individual oddballs and strange ideas in the years following Luther's revolution is quite extraordinary. Extraordinary, yes, but explosive as well. Although the Reformation broadened people's individual and intellectual freedoms, it also led directly to the Thirty Years' War, one of the bloodiest in Europe's history. But despite the carnage that ensued from the Protestant Reformation, Martin Luther holds his position on our Millennium Countdown because he eloquently defined man's ability to relate directly to God. I think uh, Luther's statement at the Diet of Worms, here I stand, God rest my soul, I can do no other, is in many ways the core statement of conscience that underlies all modern democracy. Number two on our list would have been unhappy to be second to anybody. He was an eccentric, insecure man who was abandoned as a child. He once threatened to kill his stepfather and burn his house down. In later years, he would grow violent defending his work and would even suffer a nervous breakdown. Yet looking back over the millennium, no one can dispute the importance of this man. Sir Isaac Newton, founder of modern science, master of mathematics and physics. I think Newton is the greatest scientist of the millennium, up there with Galileo, Darwin, and uh, Einstein. But Newton probably had the most influence. He was the person who put together mathematics, physics, and the universe, and helped us see what science can do. Life on Earth was not the same after Newton compared with before. If he didn't exist, it would have been another hundred years before someone would have done what he contributed. 
Isaac Newton was a farm boy from the rural English town of Woolsthorpe, whose innate intelligence and curiosity were recognized early on. He studied at Cambridge, but when the bubonic plague struck England in the 1660s and cities were evacuated, Newton returned home. And that's where it all began. He left Cambridge and went to live in, in the countryside, where he devoted himself to meditation and, and uh, mathematical experiments. And it was during this that he did his monumental work on the laws of motion. Sitting in an orchard, Newton saw an apple plummet from its tree and wondered why it fell straight down toward the center of the earth. From that simple observation, he extrapolated the laws that govern the Earth's gravity, the orbits of the planets, the positions of the stars. He was in his teens and just barely in his 20s, where he then sort of single-handedly deduces the laws of gravity and laws of optics and laws of motion. That is sheer brilliance. He devised a complex new branch of mathematics almost as an afterthought. We now know it as calculus. Almost every problem of higher engineering or physics is built upon the foundation of Newton's calculus. And it's indispensable for plotting the movements of planets and the paths of spacecraft. You guys are up there and uh, who's driving? That's a good question. I think Isaac Newton is doing most of the driving right now. We couldn't have gotten to the moon without Sir Isaac Newton. We wouldn't have gotten there. Here is a fellow that, that, that hundreds and hundreds of years ago came up with these laws of physics that have endured for so long. I mean, he's the guy that taught us what makes the world go round. The impact of his work is staggering. Just look at the other names on our list who owe him a debt. If it hadn't been for Newton, the Wright brothers would never have gotten off the ground. Henry Ford's Model T would be up on blocks. Edison would still be sitting in the dark, and Bill Gates would be building a better abacus. Newton didn't start the scientific revolution, but he took the discoveries of those who came before him, like Copernicus, Galileo, and Descartes, and increased their significance many-fold. Newton has a wonderful phrase. He says, they may be giants and we may be pygmies, but we stand on the shoulders of giants and we can see further. Newton finally made it clear that science is here to stay, that you can't attack science anymore as mistaken or wrong-headed or evil or simply unnecessary. He made science central to Western thought. The scientific age that Newton ushered in is so much a part of our lives today, we often take it for granted. But it was his groundbreaking theories of light and motion, mechanics and gravity, that would eventually make science accessible to everyone. Finally, we could comprehend our planet and take our newfound understanding to the edges of the universe. Politicians and statesmen often get the day-to-day -day headlines and the limousines and the jets. But over time, the people who make the most difference in our lives are usually the discoverers, the scientists, the people who made the great breakthroughs.